Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're here live at EMC World 2013 in Las Vegas. Amazing show, 15,000 plus people. We've had all the executives. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's live production of EMC World, where we extract the signal from the noise, we bring you the best guests that we can find. We like to talk about tech athletes, and we've got a tech athlete with us, Mike Somerville, <laughs> who's with the University of San Diego, and we're going we're gonna to unpack some of the discussion that we've been having around converged infrastructure. Great. Uh, Mike, welcome. Thank you so much, pleasure. Great to meet you. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you do at uh, USD. So uh, my title is Manager of System Support and I'm the Chief Cloud Evangelist as well. And uh, my team supports four data centers on campus. Um, we have uh, a bunch of systems architects and network systems architects. And so we just basically support the whole infrastructure. We have a converged IT department as of about 2005. Um, and uh, so we provide all the services for the academics, the administrative staff. Um, and everything that's needed to run an enterprise of about 8,000 undergraduates and uh, about 2,500 employees. So what's the, what's the IT organization and the infrastructure look like? Maybe you talk about the infrastructure, the apps, you know, how you, how you organize. For sure, so the infrastructure, um, our network is a Cisco-based network. Um, we went with the Nexus 7000 series, and so we have a 10 gigabit network, um, fully on campus. We have a wireless cloud over the whole campus, uh, provided by Aruba, which uh, makes, is made up of about 1,850 access points. We have 802.11 A, B, N. Um, and so at any given time, we have about uh, 1,750 concurrent uh, students on our wireless. Um, we have gigabit pipes to the internet, like most uh, universities. Um, the real success we've had, as you brought up, converged infrastructure has been with, uh, we started out with UCS, but then recently with the VCE, the V-Block solution. Um, and I apologize for being late, I was actually over at the VCE, but I was cool. talking to those guys. Um, trying to get the word out there about V-Block and how much of a great solution that's been for us. Um, it's one of those things that we can just order, roll into the data center, literally within four to five days, turn it on, um, with some uh, IT rock stars, as you mentioned, <laughs> you know, and be up and providing Exchange and SharePoint and, and all the other services. So before we get deep into sort of the, the VCE and VBlock piece of it, I just want to understand your environment a little bit more. Okay. Talk about the applications right. that you're running. Okay, so um, for email, actually, we have all of our students, uh, they're out in Google, uh, but for on-premise, we have a Microsoft Exchange um, that we have about 3,500 accounts in there. We run SharePoint uh, is one of our portals. Our student system is SunGuard's Banner. And then we have their, uh, their Luminous portal uh, to interface with Banner and the student system and the grades and, and all that. We have other uh, enterprise applications, as you might imagine, so Hyperion and Cognos and, and, and the like uh, to do. We have uh, Oracle eBusiness Suite for HR and financials. Um, uh, Kronos Payments, or, or Kronos uh, Time Card System. Yeah. And uh, a Micros Point of Sale System. Um, and a lot of that's a lot of that's virtualized. Now, pro, okay, I was going to ask you. Like, yeah. So, so what what is not virtualized? Is, is so great question, actually, and it's funny because I talk to a lot of people, and they're like, "Well, aren't you 100% virtualized yet?" And I don't ever see us getting there. I actually think that being 95% virtualized, 96% virtualized, where we're at right now, is a great spot for the University of San Diego. Mainly because the the stuff that's not virtualized are appliances. Like Google doesn't give me a virtual appliance. They give me a physical, cool yellow box. Um, and so there are other things that we do network monitoring with and that sort of thing, and, and those come as appliances, physical appliances that I install in the data center. I've got a lot of holes now in my racks yeah. because I've got a V-Block and I've got virtualization and I've got UCS, but you know, for the most part, it's, uh, we're, as far as I'm concerned, we're 100% virtualized as far as our goals. But your Oracle's virtualized. Our Oracle is virtualized. We use um, the IBM system for that, so we have AIX, so their LPAR technology, okay, yeah. and we adopted that uh, several years ago when version five just came out. So now we have IBM 770s, and, and that supports uh, Oracle Business Suite, Oracle, all of our Oracle databases. So prior to uh, rolling in the vBlock, yep. you, were, you were quite a ways down the path of virtualization. We were true? actually, we, we, we hopped on the bandwagon around 2005, 2006 with a, with a proof of concept, and then in 2007 we really started rolling it out when 3.5 and 4.0 started coming out for VMware. Um, and said, okay, this is going to be, and it was the classic discussion, it'll be great for dev and test for right, you know, but it'll never do production workloads. Fast forward to even two years ago, and it's like, if I don't run Exchange in a virtual environment, A, I'm a moron. <laughs> Secondly, it's not going to perform as well. You know, I mean, I remember when, the, when I first heard, yeah, Exchange runs better in a virtual environment. I said, wait a minute, does it say VMware on your t-shirt? And, and, and as it, it does, it runs better in a virtual environment, it's fantastic. Uh, so I want to unpack that a little bit, because okay. the application guys are always say, well, you're putting in some kind of layer, and there's, uh, there's, sure. there's, 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 it's, there's a tax. Well, their application be, is a layer, let's right? be clear, yeah. right? So if they want less <laughs> okay. layers, then. So that's a myth. 
right? right. Uh, this, this day and age, it's a myth that that layer is going to cause performance problems for your, your critical I, application. I absolutely agree with that statement, yes. So, so why, um, why the perception and, and, and how is it actually better performance? So I think, as far as the perception goes, I just think it's lack of education um, and potentially lack of experience. I know that um, if I were to roll out virtualization and I wouldn't put it on decent enough hardware, then yes, there would be a performance problem. But if I did a bare metal install on hardware that wasn't performing well, there would also be an application problem. Yeah, okay. And so I think that's the first thing. Secondly, um, you know, I think all we can do is just roll out more and more applications the same way and people just start getting more comfortable with it. Of course it's virtualized, of course it's virtualized, right? Um, and it's only now that we're looking at it saying, well, instead of me doing all of that myself, you know, maybe I should buy the converged infrastructure, maybe I should buy it in a box, a data center in a box, you know? Um, okay, so you decide to, to bring in a V-Block. Yeah. Uh, what was the motivation behind that decision? I mean, you, you're running pretty well. You have Absolutely. a nice virtualized environment. You know, why the V-Block? For sure, so actually we, um, we had, had kind of done our own V-Block that I hear a lot of people doing. So we had a UCS chassis, we had EMC storage, we had VMware, and we had a Cisco network, 10 gig all over campus. And so we were pretty proud of ourselves. We said, hey, we did a really good job with this. But is that the business we're in? Or are we in the higher education experience business? And are we the IT infrastructure that supports that experience to allow our students to be able to just pretty much do everything in the sense that the technology is transparent to the user it serves, you know? And so we've been able to do that very successfully and we said, all right, well, so who's making these things? Who's making this stuff that we have in our data center now? Um, and there were options, you know, FlexPod and that sort of thing. Um, but VCE came in um, and they said, well, we've got all the stuff you've got, Mike. And in fact, we wrap it around this, this wonderful black box and we roll it in and we do all these things. And it's not any more expensive. And I said, well, that's great. Now we can actually be creative and we can make our applications maybe run a little faster with some tuning. You know, we can do some Java tuning or whatever. Um, so. Okay, yeah. so. So what, was the timing just good? Were the, you know, the assets depreciated on the books? And, or did you have a new application that you were rolling out? What, again, what was the catalyst to, to bring that in? The, the short answer is we needed more capacity. Okay. So I could either, um, we had not depreciated the assets. We were only about a year and a half into our UCS sort of marriage that we yeah, began. Right. Um, our NS40 that we had was only about 18 months to two years old. And we just needed more. And I said, okay, so do we buy more UCS? Do we buy more storage and just keep throwing it in? Or do we make a paradigm shift? and adopt what Cisco had been talking about at the time, which is the converged infrastructure and bringing the network outside of the UCS chassis, right? Um, and so, so we went with that route. So you saw it, made sense, you bought mm -hmm. into it. What were your concerns before you rolled it in? Well, my concerns were that it was going to be too expensive, right? I thought, well, maybe there's going to be some soft sell afterwards. Uh -huh. Like, you know, Mike, now that you've got this Oh, in, you want to turn it on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you need someone that knows how to use it, you know? Uh, and so, but it was great. Included in the price, of course, was, you know, uh, on-site deployment as well as uh, some hand-holding, you know, and some knowledge transfer and some training. Um, so that we would be successful with it, right? And any mature company is going to be like, well, of course we're going to train you on our products so you can be successful with it. Otherwise, you know, why are you putting it in your data center? So what apps did you put on there? Uh, the short answer is all of them. So okay. everything that we had virtualized, so at the time about 170 VMs, so Exchange, SharePoint, Hyperion, Cognos, um, any of the, the time card systems, our e-online learning system, which is WebCT or Blackboard now, um, and then every file share that we had connected back end to either iSCSI, NFS, uh, or SIF shares that we present to the, to the faculty, all of AD, LDAP, every you know, production system. So Mike, talk about the experience of bringing it in. How long did it take? You know, what was involved? So I know this is going to sound like I'm working for VCE, but how long it took was it showed up on the dock on a Friday, all of the guys arrived there on Sunday afternoon, um, and then we said hello, and then we went basically, and we, we installed the thing Monday, and by Thursday we were spinning up VMs. Really? And if you think about it, I mean, it's not like it's a pie in the sky idea. I mean, again, they, they built this thing ahead of time. I kind of expected it to work right away. Mm -hmm. um, and they exceeded my expectations. We had a team of about six guys on site. Um, and we had a network guy and a storage guy. And then we had a VCE guy who got the whole thing. We had a virtualization guy. Um, and they all worked in, in, our, in our data center. We had a you know, table just like this set up, and then we went back to one of the classrooms that was nearby our data center, we whiteboarded it all out, and decided, okay, so what, you know, what loads are we going to put in this? How are we going to carve up the storage? Um, we're definitely going to do RAID 6. Are we going to do N plus 1? Absolutely, how are we going to do that? Um, what are the notifications we're going to put in place? What are the monitoring systems that we're going to add in? All of the other things in your environment, you brought this big V block in, clearly you get virtualization, so you have some VMs running somewhere, like almost 200. How are we going to get those inside there? And so then we extended the fiber channel in from, from just inside of the V block to the whole infrastructure and then did storage vMotion over about 16 hours and we were up and running. All right, so break down the metrics. What was the business impact? 
So the business impact was just simply that the users get their services faster. I don't have an exact number of hours that it used to take versus the new one, but I can tell you that um, we've almost shot ourselves in the foot because we can provide VMs so fast now that people are like, well, Mike, I'm going to need six VMs on Monday. And that's fine for a while, but then I eventually run out of capacity, you know? And unfortunately, I tell you, it's the only reason I'm kicking myself is the fact that I just didn't buy enough EMC or VCE stock. Um, because what I thought would last me three years, it only lasted me one year. And it was interesting at the, uh, at the VCE users group the other night, I had four other guys say that. The guy from Visa, the guy from this uh, gas and electric company. They said, yeah, in one year we used up all of our capacity. Because we now have the ability to churn out these VMs that are incredibly reliable in a load balance configuration very fast. Um, and so the customers are like, great, bring it on. So, time to value was the real main yes, driver. And now, I would agree. Now, what you're saying, what I'm, if I understand it right, it's not like you redeployed resources because you got, you, you, you accepted greater demand. You yes, increased your sure. capacity yeah. to deliver more services. I definitely. Okay, so now, now how did that all work within the organization? Did the organization notice? Are they giving you more money? Or is it just like, you now have to figure out yeah, right, how exactly. to pay for the, the future? Um, yes, they're giving us more money. Okay, well, um, they're, you know, I, I, I'm grateful to work at the University of San Diego uh, for a number of reasons. One is that we're small enough and nimble enough where we can turn around POs and actually get you know, the ball down the field a lot faster. Additionally, they understand IT, and they understand that while IT, certain things, you know, the, the speed of something maybe gets cheaper, the amount is, is, is growing. We're not at the point where we're actually talking about big data at USD, mm -hmm. um, but we have a lot of data. Um, and they understand that there's a, there's a need for, for flow there. The, you know, the, I think the best way to describe it um, on campus is that um, no longer is the IT infrastructure team the bottleneck for getting a project finished. Um, the developers are able to do what they want to do and we're not slowing them down. Yeah, great story. I really appreciate Absolutely. you coming it's on the an Cube. Honor. And, thank uh, you so much. I love the appreciate rapid it. fire approach. Great. Mike, thanks very much. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest live from EMC World. This is theCUBE.